wrote the, if we're segue to Peeled Out Too Late, you wrote that. So, so, so it's, it's based around these two things. So, so it's a. Oh, right. you're pulling off. Pulling what, it off to it? where? To an open E. I yeah. was doing it like this. Uh, to, oh. Yeah, and then have your have your middle finger on the tenth fret of the B string. Okay, that's so much easier than what I was doing. Yeah. Tune. And I start the song even yeah. though Matt wrote the riff, which is kind of a violation of protocol. What's that final chord? Do you have something it's open? A, it's the. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me tune. It's the eleventh <laughs> fret of the G string. Do you have all these fretted, or is anything open? Uh, the B string ends up being open at the end. <laughs> And so it's a ten, uh, ninth fret of the E string, and the yeah. the uh, eleventh fret of the G string, and then an open B. Uh, the riff is sort of based around this idea. And then you get those kind of cool overtones, but kind of no, no matter what amp you're playing through, pretty much. You, you, you get those weird yeah. sounds. Yeah, if you, if you listen closely to that, my Marshall or whatever has these weird overtones that it's humming, and it sounds like this weird ghost bass part. It's like boom, 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 boom. It's really yeah. weird. Yeah, those guitars are so crunchy. I think I was imagining some of those notes an octave up just because... Uh... They're wilding out. So yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Weird. So does that does that make sense, Sadie? Oh yeah. You got that riff? Yep. And then and then and then yeah and then pretty much the only other thing I do with that is uh. Just all go. And then, Clay, are you doing some like? Yeah, I'm just doing. So it's uh on the uh, eighth and. Sixth frets, so it's the show me that again. It's a uh, eighth and sixth fret eighth somewhere. fret of the G string, and then the okay. sixth fret of the high E, and you're you're sort of anchoring off off the open B always, and then switch to the C. And the uh, the uh, sorry the sixth the sixth fret of the G string and then the seventh fret of the high E so it's like and you just hang out here for a while. And that's something that only makes sense when it plays off of Matt's part. So and then you're doing mm -hmm. like a I'm just going. Yeah. That's it, just over and over again. Oh, that's cool. I didn't... Or maybe some reason. Yeah. Yeah, and then down to 10. Yeah. And, and always having that, that, that open, open B string in the middle. Yeah. As a rule of thumb, this is a very, uh, I always like that. Having like an open string in between two other guys, yeah. in between two fretted things. So that's separate. That's separate from Chavez, but yeah. it's a cool thing because you, yeah, because you could you could slide all over the place. You go. So we just sort of played around with those things. And then we ripped off a Belter Space <laughs> song for the big. Yeah, then we stole a Belter Space vibe with, uh, with, the... with the chorus. Why don't you Why don't you play Clay? Clay, 
one more time from the top. Hit it hard. Come on. This is, it's such a revelation, Clay. All of your shit is I, that. I have one idea. Chavez is so cheap, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing the dumber version. Right. And then I do this. Is there anything else in that song? No, there's just that. Right. Which I regretted. Right. It's really stupid. Just hanging on a D, and it's just weird. It's just nice, nice, never The last time. It's cool. It's, it's, it's nerve wracking because I always fuck it up, and it's just me. Right. Oh. Yeah. And then and then um, we play that a couple of times and then we go out. Right. And then we just slide down to different like the whole thing just turns in. Right. We just sort of Yeah, it, it it was all kind of like I think the whole idea was like trying to write a song around of ringing B yeah. strings. Which is most of Chavez songs, right. I guess. It's really funny with Chavez. Everything sounds everything sounds really weird when it's all separated. Yeah. And then when we make the chord change, yeah. right. Again, Clay and, and as usual, Clay is moving around doing interesting things, and I'm usually just staying in the same place. Yeah, that yeah. to me, drop C was when it that's when it really opened up things for me. Personally, I just play in this. The moon. they're just—it just makes me play more interesting things. I don't know why. For me. Maybe play the song from the top, and then we could look and okay. see what you're doing. What is the chord shape there that you're using? This one? No, 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 for the, the intro. It's just a standard bar chord. The power chords. Metal. Yeah, it's just... It's metal. It's just, you I, I, and you're not playing the low note when you're hitting that riff, right? No, I'm just doing the lead up. So. I was looking for somewhere to put that low C. And then this, this is like a. So it's G, uh, A, uh, C, sorry, C on the A string and then uh, the fourth fret on the G string. And then go across to the four on the G string. And then open. First fret. I see. Then you just hang out on that C between each note. Yeah, I would say the, the easiest is sort of a C shape. Yeah. You know? But but a C mm -hmm. or more like a G like so, so your middle finger is on the is on the third fret your pointy finger is on the sorry your middle finger is on the third fret of the a string your pointy finger is on the second fret of the d string so then the rip is 
Yeah. And so then, are the harmonies that, to that things you're playing, Matt? I don't think that. I think I play do the, the harmonies, harmonies right? you later. Harmonies? Which is so you keep the C as the root there? And then when you get to the chorus, that's where the weird intervals, which are like... That's just across the, the on the seventh on the low string and a seventh on the E string. And just and then show me that again. It just moves sliding around the same thing. Were, that's what the drop C did. It made it kind of interesting. It was just shit that sounded different. And then the last time through, we go. And then that was sort of it. This is all. This 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 is another song that goes a great way in explaining why. I never knew what, like, paid attention to what players do. I, no, I, I wouldn't be able to figure any of that out. So, as usual, mine are, my, mine's much dumber. And then I, and I do a lot of... Yeah. This is the, most Chavez songs, I'm, going, I'm just doing an A chord, but with, the, with, the, with that same open middle string. Yeah. So that's me. So I'm just going G, E flat. A and uh, yeah, right. I think that's what I do. That's so easy. Yeah, and then what? And then then we then we go in and I get to play a metal thing, but then yeah, you got a low. You got some harmonies on that yeah. or transpositions yes. in that riff. But that the last time I got I found with the C you can you can play the root here. And then we go back into the <laughs> And then I did a really heavy a lead, which no one can ever hear, but it was kind of better. So what, you got like a... Like an open E. And then we're back into it in the back. We just hold on the C for a long time. Back onto the chord. When 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 Clay's doing a solo, his solo, I go. You're playing the riff and moving it around, changing the chord, the root. Correct. Wow. Um, I'm trying to think if I do anything special. And like, yeah, once again, that's Clay doing a lot of stuff. I'm just going. I'm doing dick on that. Um, yeah. That was cool. I, 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 I'd forgotten you guys did it because I was just so focused. That's cool. Because you were yeah. too busy soloing. Yes. <laughs> I lose myself in it, man. I understand. The passion. Yes. Yes. It's sad how my moves are all similar. It's sort of deflating. My moves are all similar too. That's if it works, the then things. it works. 
yeah, one of the things about rock music is when you break it down, it's really idiotic. But I, I, I um, will say the one thing we did, which was cool, that do you, Sadie, when you play with people, do you know what they're doing? I mean, yes, because I write their parts with okay, them all yeah. the time. Ah, but in yeah, other yeah. cases, no, not usually not. But the reason we we, we really spent yeah, a lot of ahead. time trying, like the, the band Come was a big influence on us, I think, mm. and the way that they were two guitars playing shimmery stuff against each other and it made sort of one giant chord. And that's sort of what Matt and I forced ourselves to do. And from the very first thing like that we that worked, which was like repeat the ending, we like figured out that like, oh, if we play different intervals, it sort of became one long connected chord, even if it was high register stuff. And so we made a point of just listening to what we were doing, but not really knowing what the other was doing and suspending off each other that and stuff. True. And so they were less, there were just parts that could only exist when we played together, right? If I played it, if I showed yeah. you, yeah, the, the songs don't even mean anything if we just showed our parts, you know. And that that's the so fun a solo part. solo acoustic show, is this not on right. the table no, for, no. for Shadow? Yeah. Our, ba our bass player, long after the band was, was, was inactive, Scott called me and he was like, He's like, those songs are really good. I was like, yeah, thanks. What are you talking about? And he was like, just who's, what do you mean? And he's like, the Chavez stuff. Those are like, those songs are really cool. I was like, yeah, thanks. Uh, right. He's like, why, I, I was like, why are you asking, why are you saying this now? And, and he's like, well, I just, I never understood what they were back then. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, I didn't understand that they were like, that they made any sense. <laughs> he said that? I was like, okay, so the whole time that you were, yeah, it took him I was, to I was like, like 50th so the anniversary. Yes, he's like, yeah, he's like, it's just so cool how all the all, this, all the parts like work together. I was like, yes, that's the idea. And he was like, oh, I didn't know. I thought you guys were just kind of being weird and right. <laughs> and that why like playing the riff at the end of Wakeman's there, like while I'm soloing and moving that around. I mean, we we spent a lot of time thinking about this stuff. Oh my god, that's all we yeah. did. Yeah, the whole idea was like kind of coming up with a whole bunch of parts that that work together and also we kind of while we didn't exactly know what we were each what each other were playing we were really listening yes. to each other, like what play said we were really listening to what each other were playing so it wasn't like everybody was standing there going okay i'm gonna do what i want to do and you figure it out it's kind of like the whole idea was like how do we make a big how do but we make it, but it big, hit a nice balance of collabo vibes you know we spent a shit ton of time making sure that the songs were written all the way the way we wanted yes. them to. And so as a creative project, you can't really ask for more, except for maybe success. <laughs> except for selling records. Yeah. Uh, but, but but like, yeah, for sure. It, it, it was, that was one of the things we spent a lot of time, like tons of time together working shit out. Um, and, yeah. And, and figure I think out that really comes across listening to it. And I mean, especially watching you guys do these now, even the parts where you're theoretically in unison. Yeah. You're on a slightly different fret bending something. It just produces a lot of um cool interplay in, in space. I feel like um there's a lot of attention to space in a way that's and what it, fun to learn. As I said before, with the guitar parts, because we were sort of half playing bass parts, it made us mm. and also Scotty wasn't around. Scotty's also an amazing, amazing bass player. Actually. Yeah, he's great. He's yeah. incredible. And he would come in from LA or something when we'd already written the song and we were like, well, don't just double what we're doing. Like he had the, like sometimes we would have the bass part only come in at the second verse or whatever. And, and it was, uh, it made us think about those as opposed to just like beefing out the low end, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of motion across all the, the string instruments in this band. Yeah. So... Well, yeah, I, 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 I was thinking about the no bass thing and the Chavez thing, and I was thinking about where maybe my mind was at back then. And it mainly came out of the fact that only me and Clay played together for the first two, for the first year, it was just the two of us with nobody else. And then, mm -hmm. and then, but, but one thing I, I really remember being struck prior to Chavez Clay when I was just sort of dicking around and, um, I got asked to jam with Julie from Pussy Galore and Ned from the Action Swingers. It was so funny. And, and I guess I was asked to play bass. 
and Julie was like, God, why are you playing bass? I fucking hate bass. So I was like, I was, and was this the first time that anybody was smart enough to say, I hate bass? Because it's really, <laughs> it's like somebody needed to say that because bass just takes up all this room, just like somebody in a rock band needed to say, I hate, I hate drums or I hate cymbals, you know, like, oh, like the worst. I, 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 and, and like, but I remember Julie made a huge impression with just, just to have that stance at all. Like, I remember walking out, walking out of that thing being like, she hates bass. That's so wild. Like, like she thinks that bass ruins songs. And, and, and actually, it did stick in my head when me and you started. I was like, okay, well, cool. We don't have a bass player. You know, like, like, let's see how far we can go with that. And I started noticing that a lot of really songs that are really cool will not have a bass come in until the chorus, for example. That's and, you a know, Prince trick, too. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but, but yeah, I remember because, yeah, Prince did Kiss and had no bass. And, and, but, like, yeah, the idea of leaving stuff out was definitely a, a huge thing with Chavez while still trying to be as rocking and maximal yeah. as possible. And, and we would also do things like open it up so that, because we had the best drummer in the world, so yeah. that we would try to showcase his skills as much as we could. Not in a drum chops way, but just... No, but yeah, like, but, but yeah, like leaving room, we, we, yeah, like building stuff around him or leaving room so what he's doing, you could really, really hear. You know what I mean? And, and like, yeah, so, so basically setting so much of the, of the Chavez sound was sort of like, okay, we have this great drummer, how do we make the most out of that? Who's smarter than us and played in live school and all these cool bands, how do we keep him interested? was definitely a big it's yeah. true right yeah, clay totally. was particularly obsessed with not wanting to like bum james out so a, a lot of it was sort of like you know, i still am he likes this yeah and he still is um uh, i will go to my grave always concerned about his well-being which is great because he's not concerned about ours no <laughs> hey, where's he on this video Where's he? James, the whole thing was like, yeah, I thought he's like, I'm old. I don't play rock music anymore. And uh, I don't know what you guys are doing. <laughs> That's just deal. But I got psyched even rehearsing for these, for this thing, even relearning the song just in Yeah, I did too. Because I, you get to play all the time and I never get to play. Yeah. So I really enjoy it. That's true. We, we shall I never get to stretch <laughs> yeah. with anybody. Like, I'm not going to stretch for that chord by myself. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah, I want to see we, a we seven fret span next time I interview you guys. Yeah, like I be, I became like a a pro musician, whereas Clay became a professional screenwriter and and now film director. But he, this guy over here, Clay, he never plays guitar and he still rips. And so, all hail. Mm, thank you. Inspiration to us all. <laughs> On that note. Time. Sadie, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, thank I, you. I, oh yeah, this is really, really fun. I'd ask I feel like when, I'm going to be uh, in this tuning now. Yeah, stick around with it. It's really <laughs> fun. All right. Well, thanks, I would, Sadie. I would say, when's the next time you're going to be out here? But no one's ever going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Hopefully, sometime. All right. Excellent. All right. Um, it was a pleasure. Cool. I'll see you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Sorry, sorry, I was distracted. Okay. Lots of love.